All right. I have it as 12.45 now, so we'll go ahead and get started. I've turned the recorder on, and we're going to do class today with using Collaborate instead of doing it in person due to the weather out there and predictions on how the traffic is supposed to behave. Um, I'm looking at email real quick right here. Let's see if something else popped up that I didn't intend to. No, there's not. Okay. Um, it'll be a relatively short session um, on today because I've actually discussed most of what's in this module already. The version six part I had not, but there's not that much on that one. Um, and there's not that much in the whole module. We're looking at ARP for this today, um, and this is Module 9, which according to the schedule is for next week. So we're going to go over it today, and then Tuesday um, in class, we will be doing the midterm cabling. I'll show you how to do your various patch cables, all three of them, and then y'all will go through and build them, and I will assist you. At the end of the semester, you'll have to redo them again without assistance. That You'll have color code charts sitting there with you. I'll have it up on the board for you in your class. Um, and so we'll be doing that. So next four, so module nine, technically, we're supposed to be on next week. But we're a little ahead right here. Um, when we get to module 11, that gets into subnetting, and that's one we're going to spend a good bit of time on in class that day. So next week, we'll have class on Tuesday. Um, next Thursday, we will not have class because I'll be out for going to a Kiwanis convention um, in Tennessee. Then the following Tuesday, we'll have class. Then on March the 5th, I believe it is, on the calendar. Um, yes, March 5th, Thursday the 5th. We will not have class. It's a student holiday. That and the next day, the 6th. Um, faculty has staff development all day in Calhoun on the 5th. And then on the 6th is college-wide meetings um, for all employees. So essentially, the college will be closed <clears throat> both days. Technically not. We'll have at least a person sitting at each campus to um, greet people in the admin area if people show up. But otherwise, there Thursday actually there'll be people around because the secretarial staff and others will be around. But on Friday, um, the police and a a um, administrator, um, clerical person will be probably about it on each campus, um, except for Calhoun, where everybody will be, um, and we'll be in sessions all day. Um, the following week. I will not have class on um, that that I will be in North Carolina attending two conferences on Tuesday. I'll be attending a Cisco update um, basically a regional academy academy above our academy. Their ASCs technically um, is having that is the academy above our academy um, is having a training session there in North Carolina on Tuesday. So I will actually be doing Cisco all that Tuesday. Um, and then I believe a dinner that night that they've got us for us also. Um, but we'll go from like 8.30 to 5. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they have a computer instructors conference there in North Carolina that I will be attending the rest of that week. And I'll be in Pinehurst, North Carolina for that. I should be online each evening and checking email and responding to stuff. But during the day, I'll be busy each of those days dealing with all of those different things. Friday, I may not of that week. I may or may not be online because we meet that morning and then I've got to drive home that afternoon um, after lunch. So we'll see what I'll see what happens in that. But that weekend, I should be online. So that's what's coming up. Um, this chapter is on ARP, ARP, and the weather today was my concern because the temperature has dropped since I got up this morning, and we're under a winter storm alert um, neither warning or 
watch, really, um, that said stuff could happen. So it's sort of a watch. But they didn't use that word. Um, that they said we could be getting snow and ice this afternoon at higher elevations. And I was going to have to come from Rock Spring to Dalton and then go back to get back to my place in Lafayette. And I got to go over um, Taylor's Ridge, and I was not, I'm not sure about that. And the other one is for all of y'all to let you not have to be out in possibly deteriorating weather conditions. Um, and then tonight they say it will probably freeze over, so be real careful if you're out in the morning. Um, but ARP is what we're discussing in this chapter. That's the name of the module, AP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. Um, I'm going to pause for a second because we got a student joining in the session right now. I'm going to wait until it says he's joined, and then I'll continue. So give it just a second because you got to click through a couple of things once it says you're joining, um, once you get to it. So... Um, hopefully he'll be online in just a second. But Mark is joining us. There we go. All right, Mark, can you hear me? If so, just chat yes or something in the chat box, which is down on the bottom right, that purple button. Hmm. Not see anything yet. Can you hear me on it, Mark? Are you hearing me, Mark? not seeing a response on that, but I'm going to keep on going there because we paused long enough. Um, so ARP is Address Resolution Protocol. What it's used for in this chapter is not where I think it probably ought to be. This chapter should have been before layer three because you're really doing ARP on layer two, actually on sub layer one, as you're dealing with the MAC addresses. Um, what you're doing is, is you're taking an IP address and converting it to a MAC address. <clears throat> and so I actually did discuss this stuff with you back there when we were talking about the data link layer. Um, so can you hear me at this point now? Because I just got your text on that, Mark. But with ARP, if you remember, we talked about DNS, the domain name, some earlier in the course and talked about where it converts IP domain names to IP addresses. Because when you're putting stuff out there on the Internet or network, that it doesn't deal with domain names. Domain names are purely used on the local level. They are Ovid. 
So for it to go across the network, we're going to use IP addresses and MAC addresses. And the MAC address actually does is used what's sending it along because that's what's in the frame. IP addresses in the packet. Um, so the domain name, when it, you typed in a domain name, www.dwightwatt.com, then that um, the machine sees that and says, okay, and it goes and looks it up in its table, in the routing table. Um, actually, not the routing table. But it goes and looks it up in the domain name table and sees if it knows what the IP address is. The, um, when it looks it up, if it finds it, that's fine. That's when it uses it in. If it doesn't find it, it proceeds to do some broadcast and sends to the DNS server that it knows about and then that if it doesn't know about it sends to its dns server and it goes up about four or five levels at most till it finds it because it'll get to the root dns server um and if that name exists on the internet he'll be found um most of the time it never goes beyond just looking up on the table on the um individual pc because most of the time you go to the same address as you've been to um but in this case, now with the MAC addresses and with ARP, we've got the IP address, which we put on the packet. Um, but we got to have the MAC address to go on to the um, frame. So now we're looking down, going back down where we've been going upward. Um, so with the MAC address, so what you're going to do is you're going to look up with the IP address in the ARP table. You'll sometimes see that referred to as a MAC table. Um, and it'll look up the IP address and it finds what the MAC address is associated with that IP address and which interface to send it out on. Then that gives it the destination MAC address. Now remember, this is not necessarily the MAC address it is actually ultimately going to. This just gets us to the next device. So it will, at that point, it does, it gets that. It now knows which interface it goes out of. So um, it knows what its MAC address is for that interface, be it G01 the fast ethernet one, the serial zero one, whichever um, interface slash port it is. And it'll put that MAC address of whichever of that port on there as the source address. It then ships it on out. If the MAC address is not there in the table, it will proceed to look at what the default gateway is and use that information. Now, um, we're gonna mostly have static entries in the ARP table, although you can put, um, no, you're going to mostly have dynamic entries, sorry about that, in the table, but you can put static entries in it. Static entries are ones you enter in there and they stay in there until you erase them. Um, if there are spots you've got, you know where are, and you know which way you want it to go, you can build an entry in the table. And that's what used to be done. Nowadays, most of what you're going to do is dynamic, which means the machine learns the addresses. When a frame comes in, it's going to see which MAC address did it come from. And then it's going to see what the IP address is that it's going to, no, not going to, coming from. And so now it knows this packet frame came from this direction and got to here. So now when it goes to send something out to that IP address, it will know which port and what MAC address to use to send it to next, because you're going to send it back saying the direction that previous stuff came from the same location. You now know the way to get there. Uh, again, remember, MAC address is just the Next, if it's something we're sending, the destination is the next device we will encounter on the way. The um, And where it came from was the last device it came from. The IP addresses tell us where it ultimately came from. 
and where is it ultimately going to? So that's the part on that one. Um, so be aware of those. So that's basically all that's involved with ARP. I will mention this one to you. It's not mentioned in the module out there for you, but they used to mention it in their previous version of the book. And I was taught it back when I took this class back in 2001 in my instructor training. Um, and that is the RARP protocol, reverse address resolution protocol, um, R-A-R-P. And all it does is if you've got a MAC address, you can look up and see what's the IP address associated with that MAC address. Now, bear in mind, there can be multiple IP addresses associated with a single MAC address. All right. Now, that basically covers the ARP part of it. That's IP version 4. IP version 6 is going to use network discovery. Um, which could be ND, which is what Cisco is going to use on through the book, or it could be NDP. You may see it references that out there. The IP version 6 is using network discovery. Essentially, it works the same way as we just talked about ARP, just working with IP version 6 addresses. It does have a couple of little tiny differences on it. Um, it's got, let me look at the book real quick. Um, make sure I get these two correct on the types of traffic um, that it handles, um, that it sends to get information. And actually there are four of them. But there's two initial, there's two on each different type of direction. Um, so, It's going to have solicitation messages and advertisement messages. And they tell you that you've got neighbor solicitation messages and neighbor advertisement messages. And you've got router solicitation and router advertisement um, messages. Um, neighbor ones is where devices communicate with each other to the other device that they communicate back and forth with. Um, the devices can include your host computer or your router. Um, notice it doesn't include the switch that's passing through a switch, but it just passes through there. Um, so um, with the solicitation, what it's doing is it's asking for addresses for other devices that it's connected with. It's not going beyond one spot out on it. So it's only going past the route. Um, just not going router to router. It's just going to the router and any devices connected to that router or anything directly connected to it. Um, and then the um, neighbor advertisement messages is when it sends out a message telling about that it's there and that it's wanting others to know about it. Um, so the solicitation is if has anybody ever had a certain address, send me your MAC address. So if they've ever handled that one, then the other one can write back and go, yeah, I've worked with that one, so I know which way to send it, so now it knows where to send it to. Um, the advertisement is when it's just telling about itself on it. Um, so those are the ones it sends out. So um, it's going to build its own tables off of those um, discovery methods on it and by also what comes into the machine for it to pick up the information but there is very little on network discovery neighbor discovery i'm sorry um here at the end of the chapter um they go through a few things for you but it's very lightly covered um so that there is chapter nine you do have labs to do in chapter nine so do make sure you work on those um, a couple of them, two of them will be really good for you helping to understand network, network neighbor discovery 
and for learning about ARP, particularly if you're a visual or a hands-on user versus one that learns well listening. So, but you need to do all three anyway. They're all required for you to do. So do make sure you do your packet tracer assignments. We're not on chapter nine in this class until next week, technically, but we're jumping on ahead a little bit right here intentionally. So that Tuesday, the 20th, and both of my hybrid classes will be doing our midterm cabling. You'll learn how to do it. Um, you don't need to bring anything with you. I've got everything you need. Um, tools and supplies and you'll get to take home three cables at the end of the day um, and y'all all get them all working um, and then at the end of semester your final lab which is mandatory um, <clears throat> we'll do that in the last week or so of the semester and you got to do the same things again that you're now doing with assistance you don't get assistance then um, typically, everyone does real, real well on these um, labs right here. The other one is just to mention to you, to do the final lab, you have to have done the midterm lab, and it has to be on a different day. So somebody that puts it off and says, well, at the end of the semester, I'll just put it off and wait for the end of the semester, and I'll just come in and get him to show me how to do it. That'll count for midterm, and then I'll turn around and do it. No, you got to come back on a separate day. So it's going to take you two days to do it. Um, so you need to do the midterm now at midterm time. Um, any questions for me in here? I'm going to flip back over. I'm sitting in the curriculum right at the moment. Um, and all right. And Mark answered on that one. So. Mark, I will mark you present today. I'm going to stop recording.